Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my slightly earlier broadcast today. I did mention as today, July 4th, happy Independence Day for the American people out there. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to be at a, at a big um, July 4th celebration party stuff soon, so I'll do a broadcast early because at 5 p.m. I won't be available. Okay, that's out of the way. So welcome to my broadcast. Um, again, earlier than usual, happy Independence Day. That's why it's a topic today. Excuse me, let me rewind. Episode 763. The topic today is about independence and a declaration. It's time to declare independence from your inner tyrant. And I'll explain what that is in a moment because most of us, if not all of us, have one of those. And if you haven't declared independence from it and figured out how to become independent of it, listen up. So uh, before I jump in, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, why I do these talks every day, every day, and we'll get into the talk. My name is Barry Selby, if you haven't seen my broadcast before. I am a best-selling author, or I should say author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, um, a book for singles, couples, men and women, great book, even though I'm biased, it'll help you get some clarity about relationships, I'll put the link in the comments at the end. I'm also an inspirational speaker, hopefully entertaining sometimes too, and informative, and I'm also a relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life and business. I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which informs my work with women and why I'm passionate about women having what is a what is um, the best in life, so to speak. And also, it's what informed these talks that I started over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. Today we're episode number six, seven, excuse me, seven sixty-three. And get right in my head. And as again, this is a declaration of independence from the inner tyrant that you may be carrying around. So let me break this down for you. And of course, I had to do something about independence because is today is the is you know Independence Day, so I had to come up with something. And I had a meme that I posted earlier today about um, the inner critic we have, and that's the tyrant I'm talking about. Okay, now we're done. See you later. No, <laughs> let me explain a bit more and give you some clues. The inner critic is an insidious voice. Rewind a second. All of us have access to a thing I like to call the still small voice or that inner voice of spirit. This is something very different from that. In fact, the inner critic, that, that voice, that tyrant, overrides almost every other voice, which is why it's such a tyrant. It is not a voice that is hiding in the background, usually. It's actually very front and center and overriding most of our subtler influences. So it's important to understand, one, what this voice does to us. Well, actually, first, what it is doing. Secondly, what it's doing to us. And, um, and thirdly, how we can free ourselves from it. That voice basically is, for most of us, is a voice of limitation. It's a voice of sabotage, a voice of doubt, a voice of disconnection. Basically, it does everything that the worst critic you'd ever have would do to you. And it's working around the clock internally because it's, it's my main focus, and I'm gonna sound crazy when I say this, which I sometimes do in my talks, is that, that that voice's purpose is to keep you safe. Yeah, not to keep you down, not to keep you, not to keep you upset, not to keep you feeling small and, and insignificant. It's to keep you safe, because most of the people, most of us who have an in, an internal critic, that tyrant inside, that voice was in there to keep us from being hurt. For many of us, some form of impact happened to us when we were younger, whether it was from a parent, family member, peers being bullied at school being abused or hurt when you were younger or just be witnessing to abuse and violence in your life. There was a requirement for most of us to stay safe from that, whether it's to shut down, to close up, to become reclusive, but to protect ourselves from that violence or that impact, that abuse, that hurt. I went through a lot of abuse at high school. I've talked about it before. And I know part of my inner tyrant was birthed through that process because it was better to be quiet and hide out than to speak up and be hurt. Because that's the wiring that I had inside. And for most of us, we had that, whether it's from family members again, peers, educators, teachers, anybody who gave us that, who was an adult when we were kids, could have basically embedded in us that inner voice, or should say, triggered that inner voice to protect ourselves. So it may sound like I'm trying to say that inner voice is a good thing. Well, no, not necessarily, because anything that, let me, let me say another way, the intention is good. Keeping you safe is a great thing to have happen. But to keep you safe by keeping you constrained and, sh and, and straightjacketed into a safe place by not letting you be free to do anything, that's not healthy. So that inner tyrant 
that is often running around is one that's self-generated, which is first of all good news because when you self-generated, it can be self-terminated um, too. But it's not about attacking that voice. As I said, that inner voice, that inner dialogue, that inner um, critic, as I was calling it, its intention was pure. Its function was, dis was dysfunctional, but its intention was to keep you safe. How it did it, not so good. So here's the thing. If you could change the, the role and the title of that inner critic, that inner tyrant, to something positive, then you want to have it around. At least I recommend you would. Because what, you, what, this is, what this is, is part of your consciousness. It's not some external voice like an, a virus or an impact from some other thing that you can eject to be done with it. It's part of who you are. However, it's, it's working backwards as it's working against where you want to go, I'm sure. If you're like me and like many other people I know, and a lot of my clients have come through this as well, when you come face to face with this inner tyrant, you realize it's a part of you that's trying to protect you, but doing it in a very dysfunctional, painful way. Because the pain it's inflicting is subtler than the pain it was avoiding outside. So this is big stuff I'm talking about here, and it's not something that's easy for the faint of heart because it can be quite challenging to face this. But the reality is, is what you're doing by declaring independence from that voice is you're seeing for what it is. You're seeing that voice for the um, painful expression from a limited perspective. You as an adult look back and see how what that part is doing, what the aspect of you is doing, is not functional, obviously. The tyrant critic isn't something positive usually. Rarely do those things work in favor of us, even though they're working to protect us. So the key thing is, as I mentioned, I think I mentioned, is to change its behavior, change how it does it. Because the truth is, what it's doing is right. Keeping you safe is a good thing. However, keeping you safe so you, you can succeed versus be held back, that's a different story. And this understanding, I mean, and I'm rushing through it because it's like because I'm seeing it so clearly, as I always do with my clients, is seeing what we've done to put walls up in front of our lives, actually put a walls up between us and our lives, so that we live in a place that is, um, at best, second best, but usually in in a safe place, so held back, there's no chance, no chance for us to thrive, excel, or succeed. And the thing is, it's nothing to do with anybody else. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to carefully say this, it's not so critical of what happened when you were younger, it's what you do about it now is the key. And the thing about this, I've talked about many times before about how when we, when we learn how to become friends with a younger self and become basically caregivers to a younger self, things can change. And this is kind of a similar thing, because what I'm encouraging you to do is to, first of all, get clear about what, that, what the motivation of that inner voice, that critic, that tyrant is, that's been causing you to play safe, to hold back, to be less happy, to sabotage yourself or whatever it's been doing. Because when you find out what the reason for that voice, voice's actions are, then you, can do, then you can start working with that part. And I'm going to undo a little past integration here so you can see how it works, because this is part of my coaching work. You can, chew, you can have it and you can dis negotiate with it to find a better way of functioning so you'd be more effective. So let me give you an illustration because it's hard to explain it without illustrating. So say, for example, you have um, a, a, an inner tyrant and a critic that is perpetually, let me use myself. As I mentioned, I was bullied in high school and that was part of, that was probably the, 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 um, the final blocks in the wall that built that inner voice, that inner critic to keep me from being successful, keeping from thriving. It took many years for me to realize that. And it didn't take many years to fix it, that's the thing. It just took many years to become aware of it because it ran subconsciously automatically for many years and for you maybe do the same thing. So I had a caretaker critic inside, a tyrant that would be dominating my ability to express because it had experienced me expressing getting hurt, physically and emotionally. So it was protecting me from that happening again. Fast forward to when I had a chance to find this part to understand, I looked back and saw how what that voice was doing, what that aspect was doing, was using this tyrannical energetic, this critical voice inside, this judgmental thinking to contain me, to keep me safe, in quotes. But I wasn't having much success in life, I wasn't really thriving, I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. So what happened in, in working with this part, in this part, single parts integration, 
um, it's an NLP gestalt merge that I learned when I was in grad school. I got to look at that voice, that aspect, and to, first of all, not judge it. It's a big key, by the way. But also to have an, an opening conversation, to invite it into a safe space, and it was about safety between us because it didn't feel safe either. Of course, neither one of us felt safe. So we had to create a, almost like a, a, a neutral zone to have a safe communication within. And then in the conversation we had, and yes, it sounds crazy to say this, but I had a conversation with a part inside myself, because again, it's part of who I am, same as these are parts of who you are. I got to understand what its intention was because it had been so scared of me being hurt again. It had protected me the only way it knew how. And for that, I was extremely grateful. I was actually very, very saddened and humbled by what it was doing. But then what came forward from that point was once, well, first of all, it understood where I was coming from, that, that dialogue happened. And so it became much more safe to be together. And then the next piece was then, can we do this differently now? Can we find another way of expressing this so that I can still be safe, but, I'm, but I can be free to explore more and expand more and do more things in the world? And that's really what came about. I'm not gonna go through the whole story, but that's really the, that was the stepping stone because once we got an agreement where to go next, it changed everything. I mean, all these Facebook Lives are done for the last 400 and, sorry, 700 and plus broadcasts for over two years. Never would have happened if I hadn't done that work. Writing my book never would have happened. Coaching my clients never would have happened. Launching my coaching business, none of that would have ever happened because none of that was safe according to that voice back then. And this is the key I want to t tell you is that if you do this work, what's available for you down in the future, you have no even idea what's going to happen. You might be on stage somewhere and of course you're going, no, 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 no. You might be doing something in a relationship you've never done before. You might be living to be in a business that's gone beyond anything you imagined because you had that conversation. So my teaching point here, my reminder to you is, is declaring independence to that inner tyrant, that inner critic, isn't about um, ejecting it or being avoiding it. It's about actually reintegrating it. And this is the funny part. It's not about independence. It's really about integration. So the title was misleading in some ways. <laughs> but my point I want to make is that you have that ability. You have that freedom. You have the opportunity. If you want to find how to do this and go deeper, if you can do it yourself, great, wonderful. If you want to get help, reach out to me. I'll put a link in the comments for this conversation, excuse me, a, com a clarity conversation with me so you can talk, or you can message me over social media, and we set up a time to chat, because this is valuable, pivotal, and transformational experience that will change your life for the better. I know from personal experience how dramatic the shift can be. Now, does that critic ever show up once in a while? Occasionally. But first of all, it's rarer than it was. Secondly, I know it when it's coming because it does it from a place now, almost like checking in to make sure I'm really free. But, and thirdly, I gr I'm grateful for the understanding and the connection we have now. You can have that too. So that's my little chat about independence, but really it's about integration independence because it's not about separating from parts, it's about coming together. And there's a bigger message in there, I think. So I hope it's made sense to you. This is bigger work, I know. It's not the, not the lightest chat to have, I know. I'm actually gonna go out now and have some fun with friends, gonna have dinner, gonna um, go for a play out in Palisades Park, Palisades High School, excuse me, uh, for the fireworks tonight and uh, festivities this afternoon. So with that, I thank you for watching. This is my, sorry, a couple of quick things, but I'm jumping to the end before I get to the middle. <laughs> I'll put a link in the comments that I mentioned for my book and for a, for a uh, complimentary clarity conversation with me and also reach me with social media if you wanna get help. This is my daily Facebook live video every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually on Facebook, which is Barry Selby is my page on, is my personal profile on Facebook where I do these. Today's early because of July 4th celebrations. So back in tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. The replays you can watch on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, or on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and the playlist there is Messages from the Masculine. Excuse me, Messages from the Masculine. And again, my, my Facebook page is barryselby.author. You can uh, like my page, that'd be great too. This is my daily chat to awaken, to inspire, and to inform you how to be better in life, to have more fun in life, to more joy, more celebration, and better relationships. If you want help in the area, that's what I'm here for. I appreciate you being with me as always. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, excuse me, regular time, same channel. <laughs> and I thank you for watching. With that, I wish you a pleasant July 4th. Stay safe, enjoy the fireworks, and I'll see you again tomorrow.